So because of we have a fixed point, we can consider this as something where the particle is not getting out of, of the section. So when we make a mean, make a mean speed, then we are we are going back to that old level of, of speed because a mathematically explanation why or we we later get to the conclusion why trumpets have a hyperbolic shape and why this this type of shape is creating a amplification of sound. Welcome to Fractal Aerodynamics. My name is Felix Schaller and I'm host of this channel. Today we want to we want to continue with the next chapter, the last chapter, chapter four. We discussed about um, the transition from order into chaos. We showed that because of the constellation inside a tube system that has a constriction where the fluid speed has to speed up, we automatically receive a chaotic, chaotic situation because of the mechanical condition, conditions. Unlike the, um, the traditional potential theory from, uh, from the 18th century, the pressure cannot be re-established when the cross-section is widening again. This is based on simple facts about mechanics. All right, let's say you have a mechanical setup with a little vehicle on wheels that is uh, rolling on a flat surface. This is often used um, in technical mechanics as a simple setup to explain the simple acting of forces on rigid objects. So we would like now to transform this idea onto fluid mechanic systems. But now let's continue further in the presentation. That when you have two opposing forces that are the same, like, in a, like stated in the potential theory, that the pressure is the same here, then here to satisfy the energy equation, then you obviously receive no motion. So the, when, you, when we transport it in, into some rigid objects, we have two forces opposing each other, then no motion whatsoever happens. So to achieve some kind of motion, you need a, um, a lower force that is opposing the stronger force. Then you will receive a, a acceleration and summing up the, the, the weaker force with the inertia of the mass produces in some the stronger force. So we need, in a way, such a dynamic part in our, in our equation to allow fluid to, to accelerate and flow through this narrow cross-section. Without having a lower pressure here, there would be no opportunity whatsoever that the fluid can accelerate in this cross-section. So I visualize this in, in, a, in, in some, some other diagram. So we have here our velocity in the larger cross-section. The, the velocity at the beginning is low, but then speeds up when uh, we, we come to the narrow cross-section. <clears throat> so, vice versa, and due to the loss of motion, when a mass wants to be accelerate, accelerated, it reacts with inertia, which means that, um, that um, mass, particle, um, mass parts that get accelerated automatically want to um, have some opposing force in terms of in terms of inertia. So when we pile up or we slice our fluid in pieces, like we create we create like little 
uh, discs of our uh, of our fluid then here we receive no acceleration which means that there is no inertia um, whatsoever ever happening but as soon we receive a smaller cross section the, the fluid needs to speed up to fit through the narrow cross section and thus requires some opposing force in, in terms of mass inertia this uh, at the end in the sum piles up to a certain amount of um, uh, so we have some kind of so an integral to see it as the uh, um, opposite of that that uh, is our integral with uh, the mass inertia so we make it in another color and we can clearly distinguish it so this part is um, the sum up of mass inertia um, that is required to accelerate our fluid through the narrow cross section and because we want to want to fulfill the mass conservation as well which means that through this large cross section here the same amount of fluid has to pass through at the same time and this means this means a this a1 and a2 um, times delta uh, and the and the so the, the, um, the path or the per per second um, creates a volume. So so we create this is creating a volume, which means a one. I write it more like in a D more. So we finally receive a um, relation between when a1 bigger than a2 automatically delta s1 smaller than delta s2. Well, this is obvious um, because uh, when we want to equalize it, then, then automatically the the speed, because yeah, the speed is um, is uh, increasing to fulfill the um, the, ma the mass uh, the mass uh, conservation. All right. So now we have the problem when we want to fill, fulfill the um, the volume conservation. Then obviously we have a problem here because. We said, we stated in the last video that uh, the kinetic energy cannot uh, decrease because, because of that, that little part of, of uh, acceleration required to allow the fluid to accelerate. And because of this component, this, this uh, acceleration component um, is missing on, uh, on this part, we cannot re-establish the pressure. So the pressure, the pressure is, is staying at the low level, but the kinetic energy uh, remains uh, without viscosity and so on. So, so actually uh, the, um, the kinetic energy remains, but now we have a, a volume problem that because now we have an increase of this thrust section that Let's the um, the scientist in the old age uh, to a wrong conclusion that uh, because of uh, the, the widening of the cross section, the, the the speed of the fluid has to decrease, and because of not violating against the um, the the energy conservation, the pressure 
would have to increase again. But as I showed in some other um, real life experiments, that if you um, create such a, um, a setup, a physical setup, um, you also find um, videos in this channel that uh, show some experiments about that. Um, and I also put the, them in the links uh, in the video description. So, <clears throat> so because of we having a lower lower pressure and a higher kinetic energy, that um, now we have the problem that re-establishing the old speed, like let's say this is V1, and this is also V1, uh, is no longer possible. So that, that the fluid moves in one second, this, um, this, this uh, distance, like it did before, is a contradiction. And that's what um, till now is not really considered. And that, that's the really revolutionary part of, of this, of this fl fractal fluid uh, theory that uh, actually this cannot be happened because of this condition. You need, the, you need the acceleration component. Without it, no motion is possible. So the solution to get out of this problem is that particles are rotating inside this volume. So they, they receive a uh, rota rotary Rotaring, or it said um, rotating, ro rotating, or rotating. Uh, they receive a rotating momentum. So now the particle. When I now clean this up, we observe one particle here. This it was traveling to this cross sections like this. So particle comes, da -da -dum, here it is, and it moves. Ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum. Oh, I have to accelerate. Da -da -dum, fast speed. And then oh, widening of the of the cross section, but now I have much more space to move. But then, uh, well, we cannot. We we, we are uh, not in in in, uh, in 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 space. We're not in space. We are we we here on Earth. We have pressure, and that um, that this allows us to have some kind of uncovered space, uh, which which is vacuum. So so this means. That the particle is getting accelerated um, by the remaining pressure in 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 those parts. So, so these particles start to move to rotate to move, and then the particle is getting attracted, but no longer. Um, not any accelerators. So, which means particle starts to rotate around a, a fixed point. So, because of we have a fixed point, we can consider this as something where the particle is not getting out of, of the section. So, when we make a mean, a mean, um, uh, we take this we take this out, we make, make a mean speed, then we are, we are going back to, to that, that, that old level of, of, of speed, because when we say, all right, there is a little travel of, because there's new fluids coming, uh, fluid coming up, but, but here the particles spread up, but they remain their kinetic energy, they make their speed, and they rotate around the circle, uh, around the um, 
a fixed point. So, so internally or, or externally spoken, externally spoken, the particle doesn't move or just moves with the the mean speed of that volume. So this volume now travels with the same speed like the volume did here. So we have a mean speed like u, it's, a, it's like, let's say u mean or something like, yeah, let's call it, let's just call it u mean, huh? like this. And, and the overall speed of this cluster of particles has the same speed as as before. So u mean one is u mean two. U mean one is u mean two. But v particle one, v particle two. V particle one is smaller than V particle. Uh. Particle two. But now we receive a a curl. So now this. Uh, around the fixed point that is, is conserving for us the kinetic energy that is, uh, is, is gained inside the system. And this, this is now the, um, you can see it as, as a, a, a proof why, why there is chaos um, in the world, or the, why we have chaotic systems, why systems behave chaotic, is because of um, this little part has no con counterpart. So, so this 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 has an, a counterpart, and that means that there is no um, symmetric situation. So we always produce more and more a chaotic systems in the world. It means that the, the overall entropy in the universe maybe well we want to stay too far at the moment, just keep it in this um, but at the end, it would, would mean that, that the overall entropy is increasing, so that maybe also the overall information or possibilities in the universe is, is rising and information is in a way created. But this is maybe something uh, to be postponed later. At the moment, we just um, find out that, that we obviously create some kind of situation of uh, um, unorder so so we produce unorder we we create chaos we we have we have a um, we, we cannot return to the old static or the old ordered status but we create a new status that has a um, uh, a status of, of chaos and, and by that or oh, this is the, 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 the actual um, reason why there is chaos um, physically or, or real uh, in the real world existing because of that I already mentioned it <clears throat> all right now we are looking closer so we, we have Two opportun op um, opportunity. Um, so we have two. Um, we have we have two. Um, we have two possibilities. Um, so we have two possibilities where we can focus. 
from then on. First, we, uh, we can look what is happening here, and then we can look what, what happens here in the chaotic system. So, so there's, there are two interesting parts here to, to discuss interesting parts, what happens in the acceleration part and what happens in the deacceleration part. Also, at this point, some of you may, may now think, wait a minute, when I put a, a static pressure probe in here, which measures the pressure by, by the, the water column, so this has a certain level of water according to the pressure in the tube system. Then we know since uh, the, the 18th century, since Bernoulli and Venturi made experiments about that, that when we are measuring with such probes the water pressure, then we obviously observe a, a pressure drop. But I can assure you that there would be no real world experiment which would prove you that the pressure in this part will be re-established at that level. While you are, most of you would, would excuse and say, yes, we have friction in here, blah, 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 and that this friction is causing that uh, pressure drop. But um, I can assure you, and maybe there's all, we can also make a sec uh, a, um, another chapter about this, that uh, this is not um, lasting out to argue that pressure drop in here. As I mentioned already, these videos with uh, some real-life, ex uh, real-world experiments, uh, we set a setup shots with such a setup that um, that this pressure is not re-established. It almost stays at that level um, of the level within here. But in many experiments, you also know. That uh, experiments or not uh, experiments, but real, real world um, applications like, for instance, airbrush. You have the airbrush is like this. You have a, a, a little jet stream that comes out. But right after that, there is a a tube that is inside a collar. It goes inside collar. And you have a lid that the water of the color is not going out. And that's how um, like uh, dispensers like airbrush or perfume dispen dis disperser, dispenser, dispensers are working that they they draw they draw color or, or liquids out of this tube because of the low pressure, and then it's dispensing this uh, with the air. Um, of this um, air jet. Um, <clears throat> First of all, we are already in this uh, in this part here that uh, we create vortices vortices um, that have a low lower pressure because of the centripetal forces and. Um, also, um, I showed these experiments that the mass inertia of such particle is just too too big that it will it cannot or it needs some additional force to flow inside that pressure tube. This explains why you will anyway receive a little lower pressure level than when you would measure here, but. And also, I make this experiment by showing that when you widening that, that that diameter here, the pressure level the pressure level is is um, changing because of the inertia that have this ha that is happening here. 
So now we, uh, we, we continue first with the part with the part that, that is before the, the narrow cross section, the widening or the, the acceleration part. <clears throat> so now what is happening inside here? When we, when we accelerate the fluid, For this, for this uh, thought experiment, we at the moment we don't need the diffusing part, but just the converging part. We just assume that uh, the, the fluid is, is reaching a certain velo velocity here that is bigger than velocity 1. Right. So let's let's maybe let's maybe make it this a bit more extreme. Like we have like very sharp changes of a cross section. Like this, uh, there is the change. Oh, let's make let's make it the opposite one. Like this perspective. So this is the edge. You can see it when you look through like a transparent object. And um, and on this on this pass, on this part. Um, fluid obviously has to speed up to receive or to reach this uh, higher speed. Let's say this is the volume one. Uh, we make it like this. Volume one. It's the same. Just squeezed up or stretched up, um, as you could say. And then you, you would think, yeah, this, this mass would travel up to this point. And then suddenly squeeze up, uh, stretches up until it reaches this shape. No? So speak, speaking in, in terms of, of speed, then this this um, this mass would would in a way like increase suddenly. Can this be can this be be true? Is this something for you that sh sounds plausible, um, or would it have some kind of contradiction? Or yeah, as you could say. An unstatic behavior of, of the motion because of because of the change of the cross section. Well, the problem is acceleration. That that when let's say we 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 just detach this as particles, then finally those particles create opposing forces at, at each other. Also here. But this this um, this opposing force is already lower because um, the rest is um, compensated by the momentum of momentum change, which means the acceleration m times a. It's a bit small to see now. Um, mm -hmm. So all these particles have opposing forces, and um, so when we when we when we split this up in in a finite element situation. Then uh, we can very quickly see that it's such a unstatic change uh, of motion requires sudden change of acceleration. So, like when we when we um, when we uh, when we make a differentiation of um, 
of this uh, speed change, then we would receive a sudden momentum uh, change here that would require a sudden acceleration, which would be infinite because of this sharp edge. And here as well, so when we draw this up as a acceleration value, we would have here zero acceleration and this at this point we have unlimited acceleration in this direction to finally receive the velocity. Okay, when we um, observe the situation, we have here a constant velocity or constant motion and suddenly we receive a change of, of the acceleration. Let's say this is acceleration 0, acceleration 1, and here again acceleration 0. That uh, already is, looks a bit awkward um, for us, that uh, suddenly when we um, have a, an erroring cross a section, suddenly our um, acceleration starts and then suddenly should stop at this point. That sounds a bit awkward. Um, so what is, what is acceleration? Uh, why happens acceleration? Uh, acceleration happens because, because of less, so we have a vector in like our acceleration vector that has in this part uh, a smaller let's draw it in this direction that one so they have so that has a smaller smaller opposing force to this force so this this would mean that suddenly the opposing force just just drops at this point. Yeah? So at this point, we receive less opposing force to to that pressure in here. Yeah? Pressure in all directions. And suddenly um, the, the pressure drops. So there is no no real no real um, reason why suddenly, except that the cross section is um, speeding up. But uh, I'm discussing this on a finite on, on a finite uh, level. There would be no no such thing like like here this this particle or this part has stronger force and this uh, um, less force, so we receive a a constant drop or a constant change of the acceleration that is um, starting from from a rigid body like for instance we have a piston uh, and then our tube and then we have an orifice where the where the where our liquid has to go through so here on this piston we have everywhere equal force and then finally so from here on we have a constant acceleration that is that is starting to finally go through this uh, narrow cross section and also liquids from the side come but they have lower and so on, lower acceleration values. 
So um, draw it a bit better. So they must all fit through this, even this one, this one, this one goes there. So uh, they produce many hyperbolic shapes, all with a different, different type of acceleration. So here we have the highest value of acceleration and um, from this we may make a, a cut to this to this um, um, to this cross section and we receive a constant drop of acceleration to to the edge of the cross section uh, so the uh, a1 in the middle a0 so in the middle in the core of this cross section we have the highest acceleration values and um, to the side we have uh, smaller accelerations and so we create hyperbolic shapes because when we have a constant acceleration then we receive um, and, um, the distance is um, yeah the distance is is integrated speed over sp speed over over time again and then we, we receive um, and then we receive we receive the distance so when we when we just cut this everything every when we cut this this in pieces like like uh, the volume that that volume takes this 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 distance uh, in time so speed, um, and then we uh, we sum this up uh, with um, the cross section, and again um, we have the same volume. So so stating that the volume is con constant, then a, a is a is a times distance uh, over t. We receive a. A shape that has um, that says, or when we say we replace time to to x because of the position where we are, so like replace t by x. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So finally, we receive a. Uh, hyperbolic shape where the the cross section is is decreasing linear linearly over time because the the distance increases over time by by the speed and this is this is integrated over the acceleration and no, this is um, this is not integrated, uh, or this is, this integrates a volume. So this is integrated over time, and by linearly increasing the distance per per time, the cross section is is decreasing linearly linearly um, over time, but the displacement, because we also add the time up, we have we we adding the time. This means that we getting the dis the, the, the displacement in x is a half times the acceleration times t square, like in the normal um, acceleration equation. So by that we we receive an object that has. That has always the same opposing force due to the acceleration. Oh, at the end we, we receive a, a volume or a, a hyperbolic shape like a trumpet. So and trumpet shapes like in the Baroque age. So this is also um, a mathematically explanation why or we we later get to the conclusion why trumpets have a hyperbolic shape and why this 
this type of shape is creating a um, amplification of sound. Because of that constellation, that um, that we have this first we have this equal acceleration, and um, with the pressure distribution, we receive an amplification of the four of the of the of the sound wave. If somebody is creating sound over here, it will amplify the sound due to this constant acceleration of, of the mass inside this, this volume. And um, this is the reason why trumpets have also this type of hyperbolic shape. There are more, or oh, this is a very impo important shape, the, this hyperbolic shape, because it's not only uh, at and trumpets, but we also observe the same shape in trees. Just as you can observe in the structure of trees and also in the convection and finally in the shape of the clouds. It also, when you, when you observe, that also a tree not only has a round shape at the bottom, but finally, because it's, it detaches roots, the shape becomes like like this so from a round shape get more and more into a like now we have four four beams in in four direct but you could also imagine like more beams this again also have a kind of hyperbolic character so so we have these types of hyperbolic shapes everywhere so like they start very very little, they come out of of the they come out of they merge in, in a certain direction from the circle and then they start to emerge in in certain direction. This is interesting when we want to discuss the static situation, like in in static in static um, buildings, like why why arches why arches are stable also I can can resist so so high pressure why they're stable and why they have have also a kind of columns that are very narrow in here and then they spread up hyperbolically in 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 similar shapes. They had that this is this is all correlated with with this um, force distribution. And this also does not only go in the, as I mentioned in the circular um, state but also spreads up also in kind of beams in in each direction so so we can we can like when a very small force is, is pressing here you can distribute it over a huge a huge um, area and it will not break the column <clears throat> and also uh, the same is with X the X have also the same like hyperbolic shaping that when you um, add pressure on the top of the egg or the the, 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 um, the more peaky or the more spiky spiky part of the egg then, then you you can so the egg with a very th thin shell can can resist strong really strong force that if they are really steady or really exactly placed in a certain position. But as soon as the, the, the forces are altering or not are no longer correct, then this force distribution changes. So we have like, like uh, we finally receive kind of a weaving, like a um, like a branching um, shape. So this, this, all these forces are branching up in another um, hyperbolic shape. So, so finally, you can distribute the force that is coming from here in an area. Very easily. Um, if I 
have time in more cha in, in, in later chapters, I will I will dig deeper into this correlation why why um, how you can how you can explain or how you can distribute static forces that are very or the, at a very either point of attack into a a white um, or in a, in, a, in a white area and also not only in a um, equally distributed area but but to resist certain variation of the forces uh, it makes sense to create beams in certain direction that that the force distribution can sometimes if you if you have attack uh, have if the force is applied more in in a certain direction then finally um, the optimal resistance to that force would would look like in a in a beam shaped like a way that's 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 how branches are, are formed like when you observe a branch on a, of a tree that that branches getting off that the tree or uh, or the bigger branch a twig is is um, like branching off so if you observe the cross sections it also produces a hyperbolic shape that is just in a way um, bent around a certain certain um, extrusion axis so, so you have a very uh, like, let's say you have you have an extrusion axis that branches off in a certain direction and around this branching axis you will or the branch or the real branch is creating a hyperbolic shape to equally distribute the force uh, from that direction into the area so so it's a it's an optimal distribution of forces from one direction in an area. All right, we we now saw that how how in how forces are getting distributed from a linear direction. So we have a linear direction into a planar form, like and that due to a hyperbolic shape, we receive. The distribution from a, a planner distribution into a directed or in one direction. So it's, it's a conversion from from a plane a plane into into a a linear direction. So as you can say, it's it's from a two-dimensional form into a one-dimensional one-dimensional form like a line now let's let's observe um, for instance when we when we when we go the, the way or we, we go the way back up so like like going back to the piston we um, we know that that, uh, that we, 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 we know that that we have each, that we have different acceleration distributions uh, in in that in that hyperbolic shapes and also a, a constriction so like like from an, a planar form we go into a a linear form <coughs> so when I'm I'm a particle and we I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm moving for, towards this and then if I look at the cross section, what happens for the particle? The particle is moving towards that axis, right? So it has a motion directed directed to to the to the the middle axis of of that hyperbolic shape, but. What happens if it reaches this uh, this um, 
this line. So, so will it travel uh, constantly over here? And then it says stop. Now I'm in the middle of the of this line and, and line, and then I have to stop. It would be like I have a constant motion like that, and then suddenly I stop and move no longer in in this planar direction. So obviously, uh, this is uh, this cannot be the case. Because I would have an unsteady um, change of motion, which requires, like in, when I when I when I have I have motion equal motion and momentum, uh, my momentum and then zero momentum. All right. So obviously, I have a, a force here happening here that is. Uh, Unlimited. Yeah. Because this force over zero time has to um, um, time t. So, uh, and I move t over here, and t is equal to zero, then the for then force automatically goes into infinity. So obviously this cannot be, and also um, uh, we, we have mass inertia, and mass inertia is, is like, uh, if I want to change my, 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 my momentum, I need an opposing force. So, so where, where does this opposing force come from? <clears throat> if you all know when we are when we are riding a carousel and we want to travel, um, let's say we have a yes. So so we have an equal momentum, but what happens is like here it will not uh, so it will not. Um, stop, but we, we, for instance, we have a, a, a acceleration <coughs> here. We have an acceleration, let's say one. We start from here. We reach the axis and then acceleration turns around and says, oh, I want to go in this direction. And it starts again. And so we finally, this, this particle gets drawn inside or towards that axis and because of it cannot immediately stop at the, at the point in the middle of the axis. It will has, have to rotate around elliptically, either like this, like we have a very sharp ellipse, or, or, or maybe if it approaches more in a tangential way, we receive a more round ellipse. So, either way, this particle is is um, is is in a way circulating around that fixed point. It will never. Because it has a different momentum than this, than this point, this point, we see it as, uh, so our coordinate system, we would at the moment put it here, so, so this has no motion. But uh, we know in, in the laws of physics that, that everything has a relative motion um, and there is no actual uh, absolute um, understanding of, uh, because also when I jump up, from the from the Earth, the Earth would move in a very little way 
uh, away from me, but because the mass is so huge, uh, you wouldn't really note that, that the, the acceleration in the opposite direction. So, <clears throat> so finally, because all the particles trying to approach that center, but um, have a different momentum, they, they will not reach uh, the same momentum. So they have, we, all, we have always a different momentum and, and there's, um, there's always a constraint between these points that, is, that, has, um, that is the energy. Energy is, is, is in a way, as you can, I can, as you can say, always a relative parameter that is measuring the di different momentums of two of two um, objects. So energy actually doesn't exist. So this is something that is not so common. Uh, um, but 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 in terms of observation, energy is this, is is actually something that is only related to some type of observation. So, so this particle obviously has a different momentum than, uh, than this, 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 this line. And so finally it starts to rotate around that axis. And if these are two objects in space, like uh, the moon and the earth, then sometimes, somehow they will find a, a common uh, um, a common point of um, how do you say uh, a common point of, of weight uh, weight point and um, so this is my earth and this is the moon so like this, and then also with this uh, hyperbolic shape, so the, the, the particle is getting attracted, but the, the, the actual kinetic energy is not changing. So the kinetic energy is not standing, changing. Um, but what happens is that this kinetic energy that is at the moment in a planar in a planar direction, circulating around, so so that the speed v one is finally then at the end converted in a linear speed from a circular speed in a, to a linear speed, the v one. All right. <coughs> So let's look on top of that plane where we have our center point and uh, we have the particle that uh, is approaching that center point. Or in a other way, like, like the, the particle will never reach that, that point because it has a different momentum. I, I wrote uh, an I that is, uh, that is misleading. I is for, for, uh, is for um, current. I, I, I make it, turn it into a M, like momentum. So we have a momentum. Momentum one. This has a momentum too, because we are um, putting our, our point of observation to that point. We claim that this has a momentum of zero. But actually, as we know, um, there is no such thing like a, a momentum zero, because it's always like relative motion and, and energy or this, so this, this, these two uh, independent uh, masses, 
they have they have a um, they have a energy that is constrained um, in between. I, I call it work V. So V is a scalar. Um, and um, so the work or the energy is always expressed in between two different um, objects with different momentum. And um, this energy cannot this energy cannot dissipate. So it has always be to, to remain in between uh, these two these two masses so, so this this energy is is um, so the only thing is um, that the mass is moving from from the planar motion uh, to that to that axis motion but with the same kinetic energy and um, Finally, um, all the masses are organizing themselves that it, uh, because when, they, when one is having more elliptic shape and the other is more having this, then they, um, well, they will also change momentum. So let's say we have, we have all the same motion around that other object. And when, when we, when we want to, we will want to attract this this um, this point to this uh, this this point, then we have to increase the work between them. So otherwise. Or that's why, because there, we, we, if we want to change the the relation of energy between these masses, then we have to then we have to um, put work in in this in this system. Uh, otherwise, it always remains in a certain um, circle around that that point. That's why. We have a centripetal force that is um, attracting, or there is a constant, a static force. This is static. So this doesn't change. And by that, or we have, if we have many particles, then they distribute the force among each other, so that the next The next particle has a certain um, a certain static um, a certain static static um, gradient a certain static gradient um, that finally when So when we finally want to approach that point, well, we obviously have to in increase that work that, um, that we, that we can, can reach um, 
can reach this, this, this point. But, but anyway, but still the momentum of the, the particle is, is the same. But just with a, a different type of, of, um, of, of force. So, so we have a higher, a higher centripetal force that is, is trying to attract that point around, uh, around, um, around the, the, this fixed point. If we look at, at the planar um, point of view, so, so this would mean if we want, don't want to invest some, some type of, of work, the, let's say when we, when we have a, a ball is, is rolling around at the, the trumpet shape, this, this trumpet shape, so the, the, if, the, if the ball, and, and we have a, a certain gravity, so this is an acceleration force, the trumpet is looking up, uh, upside down in, in this potential field. So we have a gravity field uh, that has a certain momentum. Uh, a certain energy potential. So when we move inside that, that field, uh, we have a different energy level, like here and here, there are in the gravity field, my, my pen, when it's up here, has different stay a state of energy than when it's on the ground. So so because here in, in the air we have a energy field and when we are when I'm moving that uh, that that pen inside that that gravity field it receives different type of of um, a kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. The more I get in inside the center of the of the mass, that the, the the more the stronger are the forces opposing that that momentum. And let's say we have we have now in this direction the the gravity field. So we have a, a, an a energy distribution, like when we're moving inside that 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 field. That that, uh, that this this particle receives different state of energy, or it gets receives energy when it when it falls towards a gravity attractor, then it receives kinetic energy, and when it uh, escapes from when it escapes from uh, from that attractor, it it loses um, uh, kinetic energy related to that that um, object or this this fixed point. So we exchanging, and then and then when 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 I'm moving inside that energy field, and my My centripetal force that holds me, um, or the, the the forces, like when I uh, when I'm on on uh, like just cut out a, a a piece of of that trumpet, and I have a a um, tilted uh, plane, and um, my centripetal force is pulling me outside. And then I have like opposing static force from the plate on the ground. And then I have the gravity, like the, the, um, the potential field. So and all these trees are up, and then if they are um, equal, then uh, the the mass stays on that circle around that axis. So, but when when one of these force, let's say, 
uh, the gravity or the, the speed, the velocity, is too small, so that the centripetal force is just reducing itself uh, in, in, um, in strength. And finally, my potential field is stronger, so I receive a acceleration in that direction. So slowly, a, a certain um, amount is uh, left over in this in this kind of um, in this kind of uh, force diagram. Then I receive an acceleration inside that that droplet or this hyperbolic shape, and then finally that particle start starts to 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 travel towards that line. So it starts from here and then there's there's a many probably no no that kind of um, installation at some at some crowded places where you can put a coin inside of um, uh, a funnel and it will start to rotate that's the coin and finally um, it disappears in the middle uh, of that um, funnel with uh, heavily rotating around its own uh, around this axis very fast or has a, uh, um, a strong um, uh, ang angle speed but actually the, the, the um, its 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 momentum um, is not changing but it just has a has a, has a has a higher angular speed uh, around that axis so that angular speed is increasing and by that it is gaining um, acceleration in that linear in that linear direction so so that we, we can say there is a certain circle somewhere on this hyperbolic tube where we have um, where we have a stable situation either from here on the the, the particle goes inside the, the funnel inside the, the vortex and um, Outside of that, it will escape into that plane. So going going back to uh, going back to the the piston situation with our with our cross section, um, we 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 see that that uh, the fluid motion is not only an acceleration in that direction, but but parallel or, or in, in synchronically, the fluid is starting to rotate around that axis because all the fluid particles are getting attracted towards the center of that orifice. So, so here we have a limited situation of that planner. Um, situation because we cannot really say that that here there our plane starts we have always a situation where we have um, not a constant um, planner situation but um, so but but still there is a component of approach from 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 the outer parts into the center part, so 
to the center axis. That's why we also receive a certain spinning of the fluid around this axis. So, so if either I decides to tilt in order to revolve in one direction or in the other, it's a really unstable situation, which uh, which which uh, direction of revolution is is uh, having having the stronger um, or is, is stronger um, um, evolved and then and then the fluid also starts to rotate in in that around that axis this all we uh, need as a preparation for our next chapter our next chapter is about um, uh, going back to our turbulent situation where we is where we again discuss that situation that is coming here where we receive the turbulence where we also have this have this um, vortex situation so we have also what 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 is this that are um, creating rot rotating momentums and this rotating momentums we we later will um, have to understand what what is the correlation between the static situation of the hyperbolic shapes and then finally going into this dynamic situation of that turbulent um, motion and and this has also do with um, the tree body um, so we'll also go further into this this um, discussing tree body motions and uh, where we have three different objects like three planets and we 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 try to understand what's the correlation between the turbulence and the the creation of a rotating momentum around a fixed point that is then moving um, moving with that mean speed um, what we what we uh, discussed uh, earlier, and everything of that has a certain connection. So like like um, planet systems, three body motion, and 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 all this has a as a link. And, and uh, in the next chapter, we will talk more about um, the correlation of um, that different this this different um, um, extraction uh, of uh, momentum systems like like uh, if objects are revolving around each other each other they I call it um, inertia inertia systems like that's that's my naming uh, there's maybe maybe different namings for the same thing but I just call it like that at the moment and uh, we will see what's the connection between independent planet movement if with two and more objects and when they attract each other and um, what has all this to do with each, with each other um, yeah, thank you for um, tuning in and uh, that you had the patience to follow this um, movie till the end. I hope you are um, here next time when we will discuss this in, uh, in, in a more deeper way uh, according, to the, 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 according to the dynamic situation of that uh, fluid system and many more that has a connection to it. Alright, thank you for watching and uh, bye bye.